Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming this evening. Uh, my name is Brandon Juarez, a professor here for the College of Education, and I'd like to welcome you to the 2018 Fall Kappa Delta Pi induction ceremony. So welcome. We're excited this evening for a few reasons. One in particular is we are inducting new members. Uh, the next is we have a special guest who is joining us, uh, who we are awarding the Lopes for Literacy Award for culturally inclusive uh, teaching in her classroom. So it's an honor of, of mine to, to introduce her and to hear a little bit about how she's doing in the classroom. So we have a lot jam packed in this short amount of time. We're excited to have you here. So without further ado, uh, we'll go ahead and start uh, by doing a Pledge of Allegiance. So if you would not, if you wouldn't mind joining me, please stand and facing the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if you guys wouldn't mind, we're just going to bow our heads and pray really quick. Um, dear God, thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the people who are sitting in the seats in this classroom right now. Lord God, I um, am so excited to be a part of this journey with them. And I just ask that you um, be with us in this time, that you continue to pour your love into us. Lord God, I ask that you just watch over these students. Um, I just really am so excited for them and for the passion that they have. Um, for this field of education and I just ask that you continue to um, pour into them and to give them the energy and the power and the passion to pour into their future students Lord God um, I thank you for today I thank you for our time together and um, in, in your name we pray Amen. 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 thank you Morgan so we would like to uh, ask that Alyssa Frazier please Come on up, if you wouldn't mind welcoming Alyssa to the top. To the front. We'll have you come around, around the, okay. the gamut of backpacks, okay. so to excuse us. Okay. So uh, Alyssa is, is special for multiple reasons, more than we have the time to, uh, to share this evening, but two in particular. One, uh, she's a student teacher right now in the Chandler Unified School District, and I have the honor and privilege to be her site supervisor. So I've gotten a chance to work with Alyssa for the past several months uh, and working in her third grade classroom and observing her growth and her passion for her students and for the profession in whole. And a nice little caveat to that is it's actually my, uh, my son and my daughter's elementary school as well. So I not only observe her as part of my profession, but I also have this little part of me that, uh, that has a, a stake in it because I'm a parent at the school. So, it's an honor of mine uh, to, to get a chance to work with her and her mentor teacher and to see all the great things that she's doing uh, in front of these students and for these students. So we nominated uh, Alyssa for this award and she got the award and specifically I asked for her to share with us uh, how she is culturally inclusive in not only the books that she selects for her students to read but also on how she teaches uh, in the classroom. So if you wouldn't mind sharing me, sharing with us a little bit about how you are bringing in culture into your class, uh, getting a chance for these eight-year-olds, these third graders, to see and be exposed to what culture is and how it influences their lives. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit, that would be great. Yeah, so um, being culturally competent as a teacher for me is recognizing that all of my students that come in are coming from different backgrounds, experiences, and it is my job as their teacher to use each of their differences is an asset in my classroom. So they add to the learning experience. Uh, usually I try my best to make sure that my students are able to connect to the content on a personal level, so whether it's reading or even vocabulary. An example of that is we read a book specifically called Unique Monique about a girl that went to school wearing crazy clothing and if she was okay with it because she was happy with who she was. And so I had the students talk to each other and I said, what makes you unique? And of course some of it was like some of the traditions that their family had or some of the things that they believed in. And we had like a really great classroom discussion just on talking about how unique all of our students are and what they can bring to the classroom. Wonderful. 
talk to us a little bit about how this experience, student teaching as a whole already, mm -hmm. but also specifically tying in this culturally inclusive material, has shaped the way that you teach, has shaped your outlook on teaching. If you wouldn't mind sharing okay. us a little bit about how it shaped that process. Yeah, so you're not just teaching third graders, right? You're teaching people. Like they are growing up to become people and all of them are going to learn things in different ways and they're going to bring different things to the table. And like you might have a lesson planned out completely, but like you have to realize that student input is everything. And if you can allow student input to guide your lessons, they're gonna get so much more out of it than if you're like, no, we really have to learn the definition of this word today because it has to happen. But if students are able to like bring personal experiences or um, just collaborate, honestly, on a daily basis, then they're gonna get so much more out of our classroom. Absolutely, and before I let you go, if you wouldn't mind sharing us, we have folks who are pre-service teachers that are about to be inducted okay. into Kappa Delta Phi. What advice would you have for pre-service teachers who are yet to experience student teaching? Okay. That's a big question, I know. <laughs> it is a big question. <laughs> but if there is any little nugget of wisdom that you wouldn't mind parting on these. Um, definitely just recognizing the small moments that happen in every single day because it is very overwhelming to be thrown into a classroom where maybe you're not super keen on like the routines or anything, but just finding like the moments where you connect with students and like those, those moments will take you through your experience and it's mm. great. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, if you can please help me uh, recognize Alyssa for her outstanding work on uh, bringing culture into her classroom. Congratulations. <laughs> So next I have the distinct pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. She is our Associate Dean for the College of Education. Uh, and just to give a little background, uh, she has been a fantastic resource for me as an individual who is learning and progressing and uh, finding new materials to, to share with our officers who you see behind me here. And she is one of the key reasons why as officers we have started reading through the book the courage to teach and she has been a great advocate for the author of this book and i would say halfway through it are we not finding a great deal of success for the book so we're very happy about that so will you please help me welcome dr ricky to the to the front So maybe I have to apologize to you guys first because yes, I'm sure this was my idea, um, but it's okay because I will tell you, this is the original first edition, so it was back in 1998 that I first started reading this, so I'm sure how long I've been doing this stuff. But, but part of the reason is I love how Parker Palmer starts out with The Courage to Teach. Have any of the rest of you heard of this book before, The Courage to Teach? Here's how he starts out. I am a teacher at heart. Don't you love that? <laughs> Don't you just love the way that that really connects with what we need to be doing? Alyssa, what you talked about. It's not about the stuff we do, it's about what comes from here and those relationships we build, right? Well, that whole idea about having the courage to teach and what Parker Palmer talks about are so many of these little important things that really make who we are, and as he talks about it, who shows up in the classroom, who's going to be with the students, who is, shows up to teach that day, and kind of brings it all together. So I might be apologizing to you guys, but I will tell you, it is something that for so many years has truly been transformational. So what I want to do tonight is just share with you some of my ideas from that, but I also want to challenge you with a few more things. So Parker Palmer, I don't know if many of you guys know this, is a Quaker. And if any of you know about anything about Quakers in terms of, of the way that, uh, that they have in terms of, of their religion, is that it's very much of an inclusive kind of way. Also try to be very thoughtful, they try to really think about how we bring people along. And so one of the things that's kind of fun about reading The Courage to Teach is that Palmer brings in some of those things and really talks about an education that it's not about us sitting there and telling kids what to do, but inviting them into the conversation. 
So no matter where we are, that it's that kind of invitation that comes about. In fact, one of the things that he talks about so much is that good teaching doesn't come from tips and techniques. It really comes from the identity, the integrity of the teacher. Oh, so don't tell your professors that I'm telling you <laughs> that it's not about the strategies and all that kind of stuff, because I, I don't mean that, but it has to start with from in here. And in fact, he talks so much about how we awaken that teacher within, how we get to the place in our lives and in our teaching in our classrooms that we're ready to make that kind of stuff go out and invite all of our students, no matter what the age and what their needs are, into that conversation alongside of us kind of walk with us. And it really is that premise of awakening that teacher within, bringing us to that fullest place that makes me so excited about it. But there are three other things I kind of want to challenge you with tonight that have to do with courage, but, you know, poor Paul, Paul Merm, you know, maybe these might be new things that he could also write about. So the first one I want to talk to you a little bit about is called The Courage to Listen. How many of you have not done student teaching yet? How many of you have not done student teaching? How many of you are doing student teaching? Anybody else have the Oh, not right now. That's all right, Sorry. but soon, that's okay. Well, let's think about that listen. Because those of you that are currently as students in the class, or if you're out there and you have a supervisor, oh dear, you have a supervisor, <laughs> <laughs> and a cooperating teacher, there are many opportunities during the day you have to listen correct especially when someone is saying oh can you try this again or do this different or can you tell me explain to me how that this is really impacting or that the students are getting it but you see within that courage to listen means that we open ourselves up to the possibility that maybe we're not perfect oh dear do you know how many times a day I get reminded that I'm not quite perfect <laughs> A lot. <laughs> and in fact, that's the way we all should be. Do you have the courage to listen to your professors, to your mentors, to your cooperating teachers, to your colleagues, to your fellow students giving that feedback? I would really challenge you to make sure that you have that courage to listen. Because that is one of those things that's going to make you that kind of teacher that Palmer talks about. In fact, there's a really neat verse, very short, but very, I think, apropos to this. Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. You know, in that stillness provides us an opportunity to listen. And I want to challenge you to take opportunities and have the courage to make sure you're listening to all those people out there who can give you that wise advice and make sure that you are working on becoming that teacher within. So the second one I want to challenge you with is about the courage to reflect. <laughs> Do you hear that word in our courses at all? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It actually is one of my favorite words. But, but here's another question. How often should you reflect? Hmm. How often do you reflect? One of the things I heard recently was that the word for reflection comes from a Latin word meaning bend back. Isn't that interesting? Any of you ever done gymnastics? You really do gymnastics? So my little granddaughter, Maddie, is learning to do the back bend. You know, and like, you know, go over and she was like so proud because she then did kind of the front and kind of went up back up and I mean, she was just so proud of herself. But guess what? It wasn't really good at first. She had to practice. She had to practice bending backwards. She had to practice making sure she caught herself. She had to practice all those things. And guess what good reflection means? That we have to practice it. We have to practice it daily. We have to practice it all the time until it actually becomes a habit. And quite honestly, if you as a teacher can really instill into you, yourself and your practice that habit of reflecting, on what you do and how you did on a daily basis, that is going to be one of the keys for your success. But here's another part to that reflection. I would encourage you to not just reflect by yourself. 
I used to be a high school teacher and a high school principal and everything in between. And one of the nice things, but kind of the crazy things about being a high school teacher is you have that thing in your mind sometimes that we're kind of in our little rooms by ourselves, right? And we have to be willing to invite others into our room, so to speak, in order to help us reflect. If you're in elementary school or middle school, maybe there's a little bit more teen, you might have that opportunity more naturally. But will you have the courage not only to reflect yourself, but to invite others to help you reflect, to make sure that you are oh, practicing that bending backwards and having someone there to support you with that? You know, Palmer asks often, who is the teacher that showed up today? Who is the teacher that is there, which is a really great way to start that reflection part of it. You know, one of my other favorite verses is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all their heart and lean not into your own understanding. Whoa, that hits me all the time. Especially when it comes to reflection. I shouldn't be the only one taking my own understanding, but making sure I have those colleagues and critical friends around me that are going to help me with that idea of reflecting. And the last thing I want to encourage you about and, and kind of challenge you to is, do you have the courage to do more? Now think about that for just a second. There's a passage in Matthew uh, 547, and, and and Jesus is giving a, uh, the sermon out, out there and is giving some descriptions about what it means to be a Christian. And one of the things he starts saying is about, you know, the, um, the, the people go around and we can say hello to everybody. We can be kind and we can be nice, but even good people can do that. And as a Christian, what he is admonishing us to is, what are you going to do more than just what everybody else is doing? So as a student at GCU in the education program, what are you going to do more than just the regular good person, good student out there? As a teacher, as a student teacher out there, what is it that you can do that's more than others would do? You know, those are the kinds of things that if we really are called to teach, and if we want to have the kind of thing that awakens the teacher within so that it is part of our identity and integrity, we need to look for those opportunities to do that more than others would do. You know, we are so proud of you guys as our GCU education students, almost teachers, our professors, everybody that we do. We brag about you all the time because we know that students' lives are changed because of you guys out there. And at the same time that we're so joyful about that, we also know that it's a burden because you guys have to work so hard. And our professors are working hard to get you to work hard out there for your students too. But it's sometimes it's that doing more and it takes courage to look for those opportunities that that's where you're gonna find some of that fulfillment as well. You know, the idea of building those relationships first. Because it comes from that identity and integrity as to making sure that we're building those with our students, right? Because if they can open themselves up to us, they are so much more ready to learn the hard stuff with us. And learning's hard. Math and English and science and all those things that those kids come to us with, it's hard. But if they're with us, and if we have that courage to stick with them and do that more for each one, it's going to work. You know, and there's also that thing about not just doing more for your students, but also as you're out there as a new teacher, think about ways you can do more for the school as a whole, or your department, or your leadership. Take leadership um, responsibility yourself. Think about ways that you can do in that give back, because that's another way that if we're going to change what we do, you want to make sure that you can have an effect out there. That idea of having the courage to do more, I think, is also something that I think Palmer would also agree with. You know, Palmer also talks about this idea, and, and I know you haven't gotten to the end of the book yet, <laughs> and you might not for this school year or this semester, but. 
But he ends kind of as he started, with talking about that I am a teacher at heart. And he also shares that he's not naturally drawn to the idea of change. You know, he kind of would rather stay in his classroom and change there and not the whole school. He says, I would sooner teach than spend my energies helping a movement along and taking the hits that come with it. And yet, if I care about teaching, I must care not only for my students and my subject, but also for the conditions inner and outer that bear on the work teachers do. <laughs> Finding a place in the movement for education reform is one way to exercise that larger caring out there. Hmm, more. He also, I think, ends it really nicely too, talking about the idea that those of us that are in this together, that are faithfully with us, that you guys are bringing abundant blessing. It's a blessing known to generations of students whose lives have been transformed by people who had the courage to teach. The courage to teach from the most truthful places in the landscape of self and world the courage to invite students to discover, to explore, and inhabit those places in the living of our own lives. You see, I really believe that not only is it having the courage to teach, but the courage to listen, the courage to reflect, and absolutely the courage to do and look for more ways to serve when you're out there. I am so thrilled, and, and I will tell you, uh, thankfully, uh, Professor Juarez didn't add up how many years I've been in education because I suddenly realized, oh my golly, it's a lot. <laughs> but it doesn't diminish at all how excited I get when I hear Melissa talk about that or I see examples of things that come across my desk that you guys have done as students. We are teachers at heart, and we are here in order to make those kinds of changes out in the world. Let me end with just one more verse that I think is really appropriate and, and it's kind of my kind of last thought for you. Philippians 1.9, I pray that your love, and I'm gonna say for your students, will keep on growing more and more together with true knowledge and perfect judgment. Congratulations to all of you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ricky. That's fantastic. Uh, so she's not uh, going to say this, so I will say it for her. Uh, she has a birthday tomorrow. Aww. And uh, so we won't sing for you, Dr. Ricky, oh. but uh, you know, if you wouldn't mind uh, sharing with me just a special thank you on behalf of KDP and uh, our inductees, thank you for all you do. <laughs> so before we induct our uh, new members, uh, I have the privilege to, uh, along with our past president and vice president, induct our new officers for this 2018-2019 school year. Uh, and just a quick share a little bit, in two weeks I have the honor to uh, travel to Indianapolis uh, to present at the National KDP Conference. And these ladies behind me are gonna be co-presenting with me as I will be doing a video feed with them uh, and recording it and bringing that to the conference to share. Um, I've had all of them in my classes leading up to now and I think that's how I roped them into being an officer for us. <laughs> but uh, they will be co-presenters, so uh, what a special treat. They get a chance to do that and build a resume as well as continue to learn how to function as a soon-to-be professional in the field. So we're excited to do that, but uh, in addition to reading the book and helping me co-present and do those sorts of things, uh, we're just getting after and doing all sorts of new stuff along the academic year. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, 
We have a little bit of house cleaning to do, if you will, uh, per capita delta pi, as we get to induct our officers as officers and install them. So again, this is just a little house cleaning, but if uh, Morgan, our past president, and Jessica, our past vice president, can stand forward, and if we don't mind giving them a hand for all their service. So I'm gonna have you guys sit over there, and then you guys over here. All right. All right, if the elected officers can please come forward. <laughs> the Alpha Epsilon Gamma chapter of Kappa Delta Pi, International Honor Society in Education, has found you worthy of confidence and, and of receiving the honor of leadership and trusteeship. True to the idea of toil, you have been called to labor with even greater energy for the growth of this chapter and for Kappa Delta Pi. Your fidelity, industry, and judgment will be critical in broadening the influence of Kappa Delta Pi. Your zeal will increase the, in, the cooperation of your fellow members. Your vision will make brighter the goal of our united efforts. As our representatives, your exam, exemplifiers of the Alpha Epsilon Gamma chapter. Do you accept the position as an officer of the Alpha Epsilon Gamma chapter of Kappa Delta Pi? If so, you'll answer, I do. I do. Do you promise to observe the Constitution and bylaws of Kappa Delta Pi and the bylaws of the Alpha Epsilon Gamma chapter? If so, you will answer, I do. I, I do. do. All right, I'm gonna scooch you to my own here. Uh, I now have the honor as associate counselor, as well as the past president and vice president, to declare you. We have Natalie, who is our new president. And Claire is our new vice president. And Lindsay is our new secretary. And Emily, I, uh, she also goes by Hammy. <laughs> is her nickname. There's a story with that an email address. And I thought, who is this Hammy person? <laughs> this is Emily. Emily is our new treasurer. <laughs> So we recognize and we support you as you guide this chapter in the fulfillment of all of its purposes and duties. Welcome. All right, so now we get to the fun stuff that involves our new inductees. So uh, if you wouldn't mind giving us just a quick second to get ready, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started here by starting to address all of the names. Uh, we've asked our inductees this evening to sit in the front row, so if you wouldn't mind, and uh, pardon me here for a minute to kind of direct how we're going to do this. Because we're kind of tight up here, we're going to have the inductees come around this way. We'd like to give you an honors cord for the evening to show you, to recognize you as a new Kappa Delta Pi inductee. We have a certificate, and we'd like for you to shake hands with our new officers and leadership of Kappa Delta Pi before rounding out and coming back to your seat. I think that's the, the safest way for uh, fire code purposes to get it. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, ladies, are we ready to go? We yeah. think we're good? All right, let me get my paperwork, and then we'll get started. Okay, so we're going to start the process now, and when we get to names, if you wouldn't mind holding off from clapping until we get through everybody, and then we'll clap for everyone, and then we'll sit together. Take it away. Members of the Alpha Epsilon Gamma Chapter of Kappa Delta Pi, International Honor Society in Education, are now assembled to reaffirm faith in the ideals of our society 
and to initiate into membership candidates who seek the bond of our common purpose, to promote excellence and recognize outstanding contributions to education. KDP officers and members of Kappa Delta Pi, I present these candidates who wish to make the ideals of our society their own. If the uh, init inductees can please stand. I present the following for, in for initiation. membership in Kappa Delta Pi imply? It implies fostering the high ideals of the education profession by assuming trusteeship of a rich professional legacy. It is our privilege and duty as educators to transmit this legacy. Candidates, do you accept the responsibility of transmitting this legacy? If so, you will answer, I do. I do. What are the principles upon which this society is founded? Education is a vital societal force that encourages universal welfare and individual progress. Education is the cornerstone of democracy and the foundation for personal fulfillment. Honor societies conduct rituals and ceremonies to impress upon their members the ideals and duties to which they adhere. Members of the Kappa Delta Pi have cherished the society's ideals and accepted the concepts of duty established when the organization was founded. New members of the Kappa Delta Pi should be aware of the duties which education imposes and uphold the ideals of the society. We present for your acceptance the ideals which guide members of the society. The first ideal is that of fidelity of humanity. This ideal implies faith in the potential of human beings and in the improvement of the human condition through education, compassion in the context one has as an educator with humanity, and dedication to the concept that through continuous education, based upon equal opportunity, persons of all ages, races, and creeds will find increased opportunity for experiencing more meaningful lives. All of this is implied in the, in the ideal of fidelity to humanity. Do you accept this ideal of fidelity to humanity? If so, you will answer, I do. I do. The second is the ideal of science. This ideal implies that, as an educator, one will be faithful to the cause of free inquiry and strive to eliminate prejudice and superstition by withholding judgment until accurate and adequate evidence is obtained. One will not distort evidence to support a favorite theory, not be blinded by new or spectacular, nor condemn the old simply because it is old. All of this is implied in the ideal of science. Do you accept this ideal of science? If so, you will answer, I do. I do. is that of service. This ideal is the very essence of education which, which seeks advancement, not merely for self, but for society as well. The incentive of the great educators of the world has been their desire to serve humanity. Service in education implies living so that others are strengthened and inspired in striving for the achievement of justice, peace, and a better way of life for all. All of this implied in the ideal of service. Do you accept this ideal of service? If so, you will answer, I do. I do. do. <laughs> the final ideal is that of toil. The will to do the task that must be done whether the task pleases or not. 
and faith in the social necessity and intrinsic reward of the education profession. It implies working with such faith and zeal that others are one to the cause of education. If one, if one life has been given greater freedom and nobler vision, toil has not been in vain. All of this is implied in the ideal of toil. Do you accept this ideal of toil? If so, you will answer, I do. Our society's emblem incorporates the scroll, the stylus, the beehive, and the characters Kappa, Delta, Pi. Many of the treasures of antiquity, which form the foundation of modern education, rest upon scrolls of papyrus. The golden scroll, therefore, is the foundation of our emblem. The shaft running through the scroll is the stylus, the first instrument known to be used in making the letters and figures. The beehive symbolizes toil. The characters Kappa, Delta, Pi represent our motto. Knowledge, duty, power, words expressing the entire meaning of our educational ideals. The purpose and ideals of Kappa Delta Pi are now known to you. Are you ready to assume the obligation of membership in Kappa Delta Pi? If so, you will answer, I am. I am. Please repeat after me the obligation of the society. I promise to abide by the constitution and bylaws of Kappa Delta Pi. I promise to abide by the constitution and Laws of Kappa Delta Phi. <laughs> it's good. And to cooperate to expand the influence of its purpose and ideals. To cooperate to expand the influence of its purpose and ideals. I now declare you members of Kappa Delta Pi, International Honor Society in Education, pledged to be faithful to its ideals and worthy to enter into the bonds of fellowship with its members. We now greet you as colleagues in the quest for a full, knowledgeable, and useful life. We are united in a profession whose purpose and challenge is to inspire young and old to grow by using their heritage, to develop a concern for the needs of others, and to strengthen moral character and personality so that collectively, as members of Kappa Delta Pi, we may be worthy examples of a rich, wholesome life. To these purposes and challenges, in firm faith, we devote our lives. So to teach, that our words inspire a will to learn. So to serve, so that each day may enhance the growth of exploring minds. And so to live, that we may guide young and old to know the truth and love the right. To the fulfillment of these objectives, we pledge our efforts and our faith. As a member of Kappa Delta Pi, you will be expected to exemplify a commitment to equity by preparing yourself for the diversity, ethnic, social, language, ability, and other face every day as an educator. All right, well, you've been standing a long time, so good job. We recognize that. So we will now call you by name. If you wouldn't mind, please coming around this way. And we will, uh, we have a certificate for you. We have our uh, core that we will give you for this evening to honor this occasion, as well as our officers would like to greet you as well. So. Uh, again, we will do this and then we will all um, applaud and congratulate you. Kennedy McCann, Alyssa Castillo, Beatrice Perfume, Katie Bain, Rhea Bala, yes. <laughs> Alyssa Frazier, Holly Steele. Daisy Otuveras, Kishana Connors, Kristen Milhus, Constance Sanders.
And one of the neat parts about Kappa Delta Pi, specifically our chapter here at GCU, is that we have traditional as well as non-traditional students who attend GCU. Uh, that's one reason why we put this commencement or the ceremony uh, close to the commencement ceremony this weekend. You may, may have noticed the increase in, in traffic parking as well as the, uh, uh, the weekend's festivities. Uh, it's really a neat opportunity we have to induct uh, ground students, face-to-face -face students, but also non-traditional students who have joined us through a live stream in the back of the room that you'll notice. So they are joining us remotely, if you will, uh, from their hometown and their home state. So if you wouldn't mind, in the audience, and our officers, help if you mind joining us as we welcome our new inductees. <laughs> okay, so just a few more uh, pieces of information for you guys before you guys can stand up and go grab some cookies and water in the back. Um, is that if you would like to purchase these cords now, you may. Um, they're $15 cash or check. The really awesome thing about these cords is that we keep them at the reception um, area in the College of Ed. So if you are not wanting to purchase them today, you can wait until you graduate um, or however that works best for you guys. Um, and then the last thing that I have to say is that the official certificate that you guys will get in the mail with your name on it um, will be in the mail in about six to eight weeks. So it takes a little bit of time to get those to you, but in that, in that period of time, be looking out for those as well. Wonderful. We have bottled water in the back and cookies. You're welcome to stay. We would like to take a picture with all of our inductees, so we ask that you in particular stick around for just a few moments. Moreover, if you're in the audience and this seems interesting to you and you'd like more information, please do not hesitate. Our receptionists in the College of Ed and all of, I speak on behalf of all the, uh, the professors, I am happy to uh, share with you all the details about Kappa Delta Pi. So thank you for being here this evening. Welcome to Kappa Delta Pi, and we look forward to seeing you not only in your classrooms here, but also in the classrooms where you serve your students. Congratulations. All right, officer and uh, members, come on up. Let's take your picture. Dr. Ricky, if you wouldn't mind joining us in the picture, that'd be great.